Gazelle Horn In very remote times, in a forest region free from villages and richly provided with flowers, fruits, water and roots, there lived a penance-performing holy man, a rishi. He fed on roots, fruit and water, and clothed himself with leaves and skins. As he had attained the five kinds of insight, wild gazelles were in the habit of living in his hermitage and keeping him company. One day, a gazelle doe came to the spot where he had lately been, and as the results of human actions are beyond mental comprehension, it happened that she became pregnant. When the time came for her to bring forth, she went back to the same place and there gave birth to a boy. When she had smelt him and realized that this was a creature that did not resemble herself, she was terrified and abandoned him. Now the Rishi came to the place and saw the child. He began to consider whose it might be, and he perceived that it was his own child. So he took the baby with him into his hermitage and brought it up there. When the boy had grown, gazelle horns appeared on his head, and because of this the Rishi named him Gazelle Horn. The Rishi fell ill, and although treated with the right medicines, his sickness did not become less. Seeing that he must die soon, he spoke to the boy thus, O oh son, from time to time many Rishis come to this hermitage from all manner of regions. You must, from love of me, receive them in a friendly manner, invite them to repose on your couch, and set before them roots and fruits according to your means. It is said that the end of collection is diffusion, the end of the high is to fall, the end of coming together is separation, and the end of life is death. So the holy man discharged his obligations to this law. The youth burnt the rishi's body in the usual manner, and then, as he mourned, being depressed by grief for the loss of his father, he found himself possessed of the five kinds of insight. One day, when he had gone to fetch water in a pitcher, the deity began to let rain fall. As he walked along with the container, which was quite full, he let it fall so that it broke. Rishis are very quickly angered, so spilling the little water that was left, he reproached the deity, saying, as my full pitcher has been broken because of your bad behaviour, you shall not let rain fall for twelve years from this day. Because of this curse, the deity let no rain fall. In consequence, a great famine arose in Varanasi, and its people consequently emigrated in all directions. The king sent for the seers and said to them, Honoured sirs, to whose power is it due that the deity sends no rain? They replied, To a rishi's anger, if he can be disturbed in his penances, the deity will again send rain, otherwise it is not possible. The king sat absorbed in thought. His wives, the princes and the ministers asked him, Why, O king, are you displeased? He replied, on account of a rishi's anger, the deity sends no rain. The seers have declared that if the rishi can be disturbed in his penances, the deity will send rain again, but that otherwise it is impossible. One of the king's daughters, whose name was Shanta, said, O king, if that is the case, do not be distressed. I will contrive that the rishi shall be completely distracted from this penance. The king said, By what means? She replied, Let me and other women be taught mystic law by the Brahmins, members of the priestly caste, and let a hermitage, provided with flowers, fruit and water, be prepared on a ferry boat. The king agreed. Then the princess gave orders for the preparation of tempting objects and fruits filled with wine and other very bright fruits of various kinds. She made herself look like a rishi, dressed herself in bark and grass, and went to the gazelle-horn rishi's hermitage, attended by the women to whom the Brahmins had taught mystic law. 
When they arrived, the pupils of the gazelle horn Rishi said to him, O teacher, many Rishis have come to the hermitage. He replied, It is well that Rishis have come. Bring them in. When they had entered and he had looked at them, he said in verse, Alas, a Rishi's appearance was never like this of old. A loosely flowing step, a face free from beard, a rising and falling breast. His mind was a prey to doubt, but he offered his visitors roots and fruit. They ate and then said to the Rishi, Your fruits are harsh and acid. The fruits which are to be found at our hermitage on the water are like the drink of the gods. Therefore we invite you there. He went with them to the pleasure ground on board the boat. There they spread before him stupefying substances, coconuts filled with wine, and other fruits. When he was drunk with wine and seduced by the alluring things, he gave himself up to pleasure with the women, and his magical power vanished. The deity, rejoicing in rain, called the clouds together from every side and got the better of the Rishi. Shanta said, Now, do you know what the power is? Having fettered the Rishi with amorous bonds, she took him to the king and said, O king, this is the man. As the deity now sent rain, a good harvest followed. The king gave Shanta to the Rishi as his wife, together with her attendants. But the Rishi, ignoring her, began to indulge in love with other women. She also started to treat him with small respect, as her good nature was destroyed by jealousy. One day, when she hit him on the head with a shoe during an argument, he said to himself, I, who used not to allow power to the thunder of the cloud, must now, being fettered by love bonds, allow myself to be set at naught by a woman. Thereupon he again devoted himself to ascetic exertions, and once more became possessed of the five kinds of insight.